And before we start this video, I gotta let y'all know, cause you know it's some real weirdos out here in the world. If you've been getting any type of messages from any form of social media with my name and my picture talking about some linking up with you, I want to hang out with you, anything like that, that is not me. Do not meet up with them people. You know y'all take care of y'all safety. You know that comes first. It's a couple weirdos out here that got my name and my picture up <clears throat> on different type of social media platforms. Reaching out to people like, hey, I want to get to know you. I want to link up with you and stuff like this. That is not me, man. You see that stuff reported. I'm working on getting it dealt with right now. But I'm just letting y'all know anything, somebody hitting you up, talking about some this bill, fees, anything about some money, send me this. That, that is not me. If somebody trying to ask you for some money on, on social media or asking to link up with you, talking about they want to get to know you, that is not me. Please do not go for it. Do not meet these people. I don't know who these people is. These are some real creeps. Now let's get to the video. your boy bill so y'all already know i'm in a hotel right now my pops came from detroit this is my first time seeing him in a couple years and my first time seeing him since i've been out of prison so we've been kicking it we're probably about to go do a little shopping today um we got two separate rooms so we just cooling right now he was clowning last night i recorded him a little bit i'm gonna put it in here let y'all check him out And, uh, yeah, let's get to the video. All right, all right, I'm going to keep it all the way G with y'all. Yeah, I paid for it before. Yeah, I tripped off before. Here's the story. <laughs> I was just sitting back thinking about some stuff from the prison, and I decided to tell y'all about the first time I ever uh did what they call tricking off. All right, now, now check me out. It was a lot going on in the prison, and... If you, if you wasn't just in a certain type of circle or if you wasn't just, you know, been there long enough, you wouldn't know what was going on. Now, this is when I started getting curious a little bit. It was this one specific dude that used to go around, like whenever they doing certain stuff in the dorm, like if they doing um, child car or if they doing yard car, you know, which is just you going outside on the yard to kick it. Or if they doing chaplain where people can go to church or something. It was this one specific dude that would go around almost to everybody and be asking people like, hey, bro, either if you can leave out the dorm when they call child, yard call, church call, whatever it is they doing, if you can just go out there or if you can stay in your room. And do not come out until I let you know it's good. That was kind of strange to me. Because why the hell do you want me to be in my room or outside the dorm? You know what I'm saying? And he's paying you. He ain't just, hey, bro, stay in the room. No. He's paying you to not come out the room or to just get out the dorm. So the first couple times, I leave out the dorm. You know what I'm saying? But I seen like up there by the corner when he was coming around asking people when he got to me and asked me. I seen like five dudes standing up there in the corner. But they wasn't all huddled up. They was just like standing next to each other on the rail. So the guys I run with, you know, I got to bring it to their attention from the very first time. I brought it to their attention like, you know, just making sure this ain't no security issue. Like they not about to try to do nothing to nobody. Like the first dude I said something to, how I remember, he talked about, man, mind your business, mind your business. So I felt like I knew it was something, something up with that because since when do you tell me to mind my business when I'm coming to you with a security issue? Like, hey, bro, you got four or five guys standing up here. He's trying to pay people to leave out the dorm when they call yard. What do they got going on? 
They might be trying to run in and hit somebody with the candy bar, you know what I'm saying? And they don't want other people to be able to help them. So dude, like, nah, mind your business, mind your business, type stuff like that. So the second time I said something to somebody different, and he was like, nah, ain't nothing going on, ain't nothing going on, you know what I'm saying? So I'm like, damn, ain't nobody. So I asked one of my homeboy dude, I was real cool with, I'm like, bro, what do they be having going on? You know what I'm saying? Now, y'all already know, I'm not nosy, I ain't trying to be in nobody's business, but this this just looks a little too awkward with me. You know, I, I be getting paranoid quick. So my mind was on some funny business, like, man, something going on, something strange going on. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, I wanted to know for that reason. So dude was like, man, you know, they be out there running the train on Miss Such and Such on the officer. I'm like, what? Now, here's the thing. This officer looks pretty damn good. She was real pretty, had nice pretty teeth, nice little body. You know what I'm saying? I done tried to holler at her once or twice. But I knew she was with it. I pulled my phone out in front of her one day on purpose and was, like, talking to her. And I acted like I forgot. Like, I just got that comfortable. I pulled it out. And I was like, oh, damn, my bad. But I really did that just to see, you know, trying to shoot my shot at her. She didn't tell on me. I didn't get in no trouble for it or nothing. So... Now I'm interested into really knowing how true this is. You know what I'm saying? So whenever I see her by herself, I just try to go up and holler at her. But what I, I what I made sure to do was every time I'm going just a tad bit further, like every time I'm going to say something extra slick, slicker than I said the last time, just because I'm trying to figure out what's really going on here. How far is she going to let me go with it? Because Dude just told me that when 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 they tell everybody to get out the door, that they be out there running the train on them. So I kind of halfway don't believe it. But I'm like, man, I don't know about this. You know what I'm saying? But what I did notice was that was funny. Like during count time, she might count. And if you don't come out the room, they'll come in your room and count you. In certain rooms, she'll go in for a long, she'll go in for like 30 seconds and come back out. Listen. It don't take no damn 30 seconds to walk in no little bitty ass cell and come right back out. So I used to wonder, like, what the hell she got? You know, but it ain't my business. So, you know, I'm hustling. I'm doing my thing. I'm getting me a little money, a couple dollars. Now I'm really interested in knowing. So I pull it back up on my one home, but who told me? And I was like, hey, bro. He like, yeah. I'm like, they be up there running the train on her for real. So he like, he started laughing. He like, oh, freak. I'm like, no, no, no. I'm dead serious. So he like, yeah, bro, but you got to pay. It ain't free. I'm like, shit, how much? So he like, I don't know. I'm going to holler at bro for you, but it's high. I'm telling you, it ain't cheap. I'm really thinking dude is playing games with me because he's a big jokester. He like to play. That's what he like to do. He like to play. So I'm really believing dude is playing some type of game. He come back and holler at me about an hour and a half, two hours later. And he was like, hey, old dude, who girl that is, he said a band just to get in the rotation with everybody else. But 1500 if you want to buy it by yourself in your room, by yourself, nobody else around. I bust out laughing. I really honestly think he's just talking. I really think he's just, you know what I'm saying? He just feel like saying something. So he's like, no, nah, I'm dead serious. So I'm like, what? He was like, bro, whenever you see them folks all the way up there in that corner like that, he said, they just be lined up. They be waiting because when old girl finally come in here, they hitting her back to back. So they got to already be right because ain't no, hold on, let me get right. She going to tell you get on. So he like, they be up there waiting on their turn and one dude be in the room already, I guess getting right. And then when she go in there, they hit it, and he's out of there. The next dude walk in, you know, they, they do it kind of like that. So it still didn't make sense to me because I'm, I'm looking around the dorm like, it's a camera right there. It's a camera right there. It's a camera right there. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, how is that possible? How are you possibly doing that? It just don't add up. It don't make sense. And then sometimes around this time, it was two officers working a lot of times. So it'd be one officer in the booth. You know what I'm saying? So 
I'm like, you know, I'm sitting here thinking like, because I want to do it. I've been locked up for some years too. And I've been making a little money. I want to do it, but it's like, I don't want nobody to try to play no games with me. You know what I'm saying? Try to come up with no excuse why this or that or that. I'm like, all right, bet. What I need to do. So he like, I'm going to tell brother, holler at you. So I was a dude in my dorm, my old school dude. I didn't really talk to him much, but I didn't have no issues with him. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes he used to buy cigarettes from me. But that's about far as it went. We ain't never had no issues. We ain't never talked that much. I don't know if I sound a little different. I feel like my throat is a little... I'm not going to say sore, but I don't know. I just feel like, you know, the way it feels before it gets sore. But I don't think it's going to get sore because it's been feeling like that for a couple days. I just feel like my voice sound a little different. But anyway, dude come holler at me. So dude, the old school dude came down there. He smiled. He like, hey, uh, bro told me that you were trying to, uh, you trying to get down. Now, you know, in the prison, when people go to saying stuff like get down, Usually that means like one or two things, you know what I'm saying? Like some fruity type stuff or like some violence. But he got a little smirk on his face, so I feel like he ain't trying me on neither one of them. So I'm like, what you talking about? And he was like, I told him a thousand, you could come up there and just get in rotation with everybody. No longer than five minutes. And uh or you could get it in your room by yourself, fifteen hundred, get you about ten minutes. So, I'm like, bro, you dead serious? So, he started smiling. He's like, yeah, 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 yeah. Fact. He was like, or if you just want to buy some pictures and videos. And he turned, he had his phone in his hand when he came in the room. He turned the phone to me and just, like, went to skimming through. Like, he had click play on the video. Get off of the click play. Just show me a few seconds. And this old girl, that officer, you know, one video, she might be bent up. One video, her leg behind her neck looking like a damn pretzel. I'm like, oh, that's wild. So, you know, I go on to my little green dot account and check it out. I ain't going to lie to y'all, bro. I had like $1,900 to my name. But I ain't with all that other people stuff. We up here standing next to each other. I just don't understand how that's even going to go about. So... I'm like, I'm going to go with the fit in. So he like, all right, come on with it. He give me the, uh, I don't remember how we were sending it from the uh, money pack Walmart card. I think we were sending the card to card. I think we were doing card to card transactions. It's been a little minute. So I sent the money to him. He like, all right, I got you. Just chill, just be patient. So I'm still trying to sit here and figure out how is this possible when you got three, four cameras in this dorm? And around this time, it wasn't as, um, like how it's barely no officers. Now it wasn't like that back then. It was officers working at this point. So I'm still trying to process it in my brain. How is this possible? How is this even going to work without nobody getting in trouble? But if this true, it's been working before. So, hey, I'm not about to be the one to, you know what I'm saying? So the next time the girl came to work, I'm trying to see if she, like, if, if, if he done told her, like, yeah, that's going to be the one. Or if he don't tell her, whatever the case is. But she was acting the same. She was acting normal. You know what I'm saying? And I wasn't even talking to her no more. I don't know why I got nervous. But like how I told you, I usually go up and holler at her or something. I wasn't even doing that no more. I was just, I was just doing me, doing time. So, you know, they call a child call, dude, don't say nothing. I go look out the door on purpose. Ain't nobody out there doing nothing funny. You know what I'm saying? So, the next day, same thing happened. You feel me? So, like, you know, she off the next three days. So, I don't say nothing. I ain't tripping. I'm still hustling. I'm still doing my thing. So, when she came back on for the next two days, the same thing happened. Nothing. So, I'm sitting back thinking like, damn. I hope that old man don't think he just jugged me out of $1,500. I hope he don't think he just finessed me, finagled me some type of way because we're going to have a real issue. You know what I'm saying? But I'm trying, I try not to even have my mind on negativity, like real talk. Like whenever I think about something negative instantly, I try to get my mind off of it. I think about something too crazy. 
I'm going to start praying or think about my son or something. I'm dead serious. So I just try to keep that type of stuff clear off my brain. So I'm just thinking. So I'm like, I'm trying to think of ways to approach him without showing my aggression because it is starting to aggravate me. I can't even lie. It's, it's, it's starting to irritate me because now I'm trying to figure out what's going on. So I say, well, next time she works, after this, this will be the third time. Next time she work, if dude don't pull up and say nothing to me, then I'ma just pull up on him and see what's up. So she came back to work. I was in my room. I think I had to doze off or something. And when I came out the room, I noticed everybody was gone down there. It was like one dude walking around on the floor. And he was walking around over there by the windows. So he really looking out the window, watching the window, trying to see if anybody coming or something. But as soon as I stuck my head out the door, he was looking by the window. As soon as he looked over at me and seen me, he did like this. Like, telling me to go back in the room. So, I went back in the room, but that's because I know there's something going on that ain't, you know, don't nobody really need to be out. So, instantly, I'm thinking about old girl, because this is her shift. She worked. So, I'm like, oh, man. She probably about to come in here next. She got to be up there with them. You know what I'm saying? Man, so I done came in here. I done primed up, got to get myself all the way right. Then it's like, I'm so nervous trying to rush it, it ain't even getting right like I need. <laughs> Man, so then I go to thinking, damn, I ain't got no rubber. You know what I'm saying? So now I'm looking around my room for stuff because even though I ain't been... Even though I've been without it for so long, I'm just not that type of guy. You feel me? Because you out here on the streets every day, you dealing with people in here. I don't want to catch nothing. I'm looking around, and I don't find a uh, I don't find a saran wrap that came on a pack out. You know, I told y'all the pack outs is when they bring you the sandwiches. It be in a bag with like a fruit, but the actual that's in a plastic bag. But the actual sandwich is inside a saran wrap, wrapped up. So I still had some of that in my room. Man, I done went over there, grabbed the saran wrap, cleaned it off, wrapped him up, and I'm in there just, you know, I'm just in there just waiting patiently. Like, okay, okay, okay. You know what I'm saying? My mind, I'm nervous, my heart beating. Next thing you know, I hear noise. I go go up to the window and look out the door. Everybody coming back in from child. And then I see some boots on the steps walking down. This old girl coming down the steps, going back up. So I'm like, ain't no way. So I leave out the room. You know, I clean that stuff off. Then I go out the room. I look up that way. It's like one dude walking down the step. They talking loud. He's like, hey, yeah, what? He's smiling. He's doing like this. You know what I'm saying? The other dude just standing there. Like this, then one other dude come out that room with a rag, wiping off his forehead, smiling. And then old school, I heard old school say, oh, that was worth a thousand ain't. And all of them was like, hell yeah, you know what I'm saying? I looked right at old school. He looked right back at me and ain't say nothing, bro. Went back in his room. So I said, okay, old girl got one more day tomorrow. If, if, if he don't pull up and say nothing, I'm definitely pulling up. And... I don't know, because now I'm starting to feel tired. You know what I'm saying? I went back in my room, laid down. I said, I'm going to just wait till tomorrow. I'm going to just wait till tomorrow. I ain't going to say nothing about it. And then I said, you know what? Bump that, bro. I got straight up, went up there to the old school room, knocked on the door. Do, do, do. He like, yo. I'm like, Bill. He like, come on, Bill. I go in there. I'm like, what's up, bro? Oh, what's up, nephew? Uh, what's going on with you? You all right? It kind of pissed me off because it's like, he talking to me like, like what's up, bro? You all right? Like, he just seen me somewhere that we just ain't seeing each other and what's up, what's going on? You know what I'm saying? Instead of addressing me like we got some business and you know why I'm up here, go on, update me on the status of what we got going on. So when he didn't do that, it kind of pissed me off. So I'm like, hell no, nah, and nah, I, what's up, man? He like, what you mean? I'm like, what's up? He was like, what's up with what? I was like, bro, just send me my money back. I'm not about to play these games with you. So he's like, oh, damn, Bill. No, I ain't forgot about you, bro. I ain't forgot about you. He's talking about, you know, I be having so much going on. It just, I ain't really know what you were talking about exactly. He was like, but I got you. Your turn coming up real soon. So I'm sitting there thinking like, damn, my turn? 
You know, it's a hundred dudes in this dorm now. Everybody ain't getting money. Everybody can't afford to send nobody a thousand or fifteen hundred. But I was just thinking like, damn, my turn, that let me know that there's a lot going on. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, oh, all right, I thought you forgot about me. I'm just trying to make sure, you know, people get transferred out the blue. You know what I'm saying? People get fired. Anything can happen. He was like, man, this is my word, bro. If you ever transfer before this happens, I'm going to look you up and send you your money. That's my word. But, you know, somebody saying that's my word, that don't really mean nothing to me. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like, all right, whatever. Later on that night, probably about 10 o'clock that night, man. I'm in that land down. I'm not asleep. I got the candy bar on my chest. And I'm just laid back like this. And I'm just thinking, but I kind of feel like I'm getting ready to doze off. But I don't, I'm not asleep, but I feel like I'm in the process like I can go to sleep. You know what I'm saying? I'm laying back, knock on the door. I say, yo. Dude open the door, it's old school. So I'm like, what's up, huh? He like, hey, uh, Magnum or Trojan. So he threw me off guard. I'm like, what? He was like, Magnum or Trojan. So I was looking at him. I mean, I know what we got going on, but that was just kind of, it just kind of threw me off a little bit. So I'm looking at him. He was like, hey, nephew, I'm trying to set this up for you. I'm trying to just handle the business. And, you know, I'm just trying to see. So, I don't know. That that, that just kind of made me, it just made me feel a little awkward. You know what I'm saying? But once he explained everything, whatever, I told him. Then he told me that, all right, you coming up soon. And he said, when you get done using it, do not flush it. Don't throw it away. He said, put it in a little garbage bag and I'll come get it. He said, oh, girl want to be the one to flush it, throw it away herself because... You know, she don't trust dudes because you might say, oh, yeah, I flushed it. I threw it out. But you really being childish, just trying to keep it and show your partner, like, look, what you know, I was smashing old girl for real and trying to show them the rubber. So he like, nah, she want to flush them herself. So just put it in the garbage bag because, you know, then if, the, if another police ever find that, then they might try to go doing extra stuff. Then it's going to be a big issue about where you got it from. You know what I'm saying? what you had it for type stuff like that. So I'm like, yeah, all right, cool. Bro, he came back to me. All right, now, this one, I, like, my mind be tripping so much. I thought I'd been through so much. I'm outside the room. This the next day. Oh, girl working. I ain't said nothing to her. I'm outside the room. And one of the little young dudes walked past me. And he asked old school. Old school was down there because he was coming, walking this way, talking to somebody. And he asked old school. He said, you got some more Vaseline up there? He got a broom in his hand. He said, you got some more Vaseline up there? So old school was like, man, I just gave you a whole job yesterday. Or last week, whenever he said, he said, man, I just gave you a whole job. So dude was like, man, I used it. He like, bro, you ain't used that whole job doing that. He said, man, you had to do something else with it. So he was like, bro, I ain't got no more right now. That's the bottom line. Do you have some more? So he was like, yeah, just go grab one off my shelf. So dude went to old school room. Old school came and stood next to me. He said, what's up? You all right? I said, yeah. He said, don't be scared. Now, this is going to be the best 10 minutes of your life now. So I'm like, what? So now I'm getting kind of excited. Like, okay. Okay, it's about to go down. Okay. Okay, so we finna make that happen. Okay. So while I'm talking to him, I wasn't looking at his hand, but I felt him bump my hand. And then when I looked down at him, he had the condom in his hand. So I grabbed it real quick, stuck it in my pipe. So he was like, the rapper to that and the actual thing, when you done, he handed me a small trash bag. It come from the officer because they the only one got them real small trash cans in the booth. So he handed me a little trash bag. He said, when you done, just throw it in there, tie it up. I'm going to come get it, give it to the old girl. She going to get rid of it. I'm like, all right, cool. So I'm looking at the young dude that came around with the broom that asked him about the Vaseline. Now, what threw me off was I see the young dude stick his hand in it. He grabbed like a big old glob of it and he slide it down on the tip of the broom. Like this the broom, these the brushes standing up. He didn't put it directly on the brush, not on the tip like that, my bad. He put it like on this part of the brush, you know what I'm saying? But right close to the tip. And then he went straight over there to one of them cameras, raised the broom all the way up, and carefully, 
like slid it and wiped it on there. So this is what the man did to all the cameras. He put a glob of Vaseline on the broom and covered the camera with the Vaseline. So it made me paranoid at first. And I don't know why I wasn't even thinking this is what he doing so I can do what I need to do. My brain was just so tripped out. I've seen people do that before. When they getting ready to hit somebody with the candy bar and they don't want to get caught. They don't want the police to know who did it. They'll do something like that. And then go hit you with the candy bar. So when the police pull the cameras back, only thing they can go based off of is the person that they seen covering it, which most of the time he got his face covered with all type of rags and tiles and stuff. So the only thing they can do after that is try to see what area he came from before he covered it. But then they might purposely be six, seven, eight, nine deep all in one area anyway. So they really can't pinpoint who it is. Which leads to the police usually free picking people, just lock up some people that they don't even know just because they can't see. But my candy bar was on my bed. So I'm talking to me. I'm like, hold on real quick. I go in the room, grab the candy bar. I'm like, I don't get why Buddy blocking the cameras up. You know what I'm saying? So when I came back out, he was like, yeah, man, when, when he get done blocking them cameras off, he looked at his watch. He said, they get this chow call going on. You got 10 minutes of fame, my boy. So I'm like, all right. So that's when they hit me like, okay, he doing that to protect her. I'm like, all right, cool. Say this. I go in there. Like I say, I prime up. I get myself right. I put it on. And at first I was standing. I was so nervous. <laughs> I was standing up. Then I sat down. Then I started walking back and forth, looking out the little window. So I see them going around, room to room, talking to people and stuff like that. So I already know what's going on, dude, giving some people like Chris Brown CD, Al Green CD. Uh, for those of you who new to my channel, Chris Brown and Al Green CD is just some lingo that they used to use in a prison where they refer to a Chris Brown CD as a cigarette, Al Green CD as some weed, and, uh, you know, cream, offering people cream, whatever the case. So I see them folks clearing out, everybody clearing out the dawn, you know what I'm saying? It's child call now. I hear the girl at the door screaming child call. Now, my room is the very first room in the dorm. As soon as you come in the dorm, you got to come this way, walk down the steps. I got the very first room in the dorm. So, old girl come in the dorm. I hear one of the dudes upstairs tell her, uh, my door lock, I need you to open the door with the key. Because sometimes, like the officer got a control booth, in the, a control panel in the booth. So, they can just hit the button and it'll unlock everybody's door. But everybody door, some people door jammed up or rigged up or broke to the point the officer got to come in and use the key. So that's not going to work for just any and everybody room. So dude say, my door lock, I need you to open it with the key. So I'm looking at her walk up the steps. She looked straight down at my room. She didn't look like this, but like she glanced down and then looked, went back up the steps. So that's when I knew officially like, yeah, it's about to go down. Yeah, it's, it's definitely, it's about to go down. You know what I'm saying? So I'm in there, man, walking around. I done went and stood at the back of the wall with my back on the wall, just looking like this. And then I told him, I said, hell no, nah, man, you look crazy, man. That girl walking here, you standing there looking creepy like that. You know what I'm saying? So I had to come over there. I'm like, damn, I don't know why my heart was beating so fast. I think because it's been so long, my heart was racing. So I go sit down on the bed. And I'm just like, all right, it is what it is. Old girl came in there. She came in quick. She smiled. I'm talking about, what's up? I'm like, she here. What's up? You know what I'm saying? So she came straight over there. She was like, you want the top or the bottom? You only getting one or the other. So I'm like, you know. So, man, she came up out of it real quick. Uniform came down. Bent over on the bed. Hey, man. And dude told me, talking about, you only got 10 minutes. 10 minutes? It ain't even take that damn long. I've been locked up for years. It, I don't even think it was nowhere near 10 minutes. You feel me? But when I got right, she got straight up while she was tugging in her shirt and stuff. She was like, Go on, take that off, take that off. I'm damn near about laid out. I'm on the bed, like, you know what I'm saying? She's like, come on, get up, take that off. So I took it off, threw it in the bag. 
tied it up real quick. She grabbed the bag, but when she was getting ready to come out the room, she dropped the bag at my door. I guess letting dude you know, come get this now. She dropped the bag at the door and she came out the room and went straight up the steps and went that way. So I'm like, oh man. So I came out the room. So I went up there. I got my cup. I went to the ice thing. Like I'm trying to get some ice real quick, which I was thirsty. And I went to go get some ice. And when I looked up there, man, it was like six dudes just in different parts of the rail right there. You know what I'm saying? Then you had that one dude walking around the dorm still. He didn't say nothing to me that time because I was in on the lake this time. So it's just like, okay, you already know what's going on. So um, I went and got the ice, went back to my room. When they came back in from chow, old school came and talked to me. He was like, you straight? I mean, I was about down sleep. So I'm like, hey, yeah. So he like, man, I'm telling you, man, you know, the more you... The more you shop, the more you pull up. I start letting you get little discounts and stuff. Start letting you get little discount. So I had to bounce back from that. You know what I'm saying? I, I just spent that bread like that. I had to bounce back from that. So old girl started talking to me again. Like when she see me, she be like, what's up? You know, always smiling, always flirting and, and saying little stuff about that. Like one day she, gonna, she was counting. Be standing on the door. She going to walk past me and say, what's up, Mr. Foe, man? And she bust out laughing, but she kept counting and walking. You know what I'm saying? I didn't give a damn. Hey, I've been locked up four, five years at the time. I don't care. So I started back talking to her. So she telling me, like, I feel like don't treat me different. You know what I'm saying? I feel like you've been acting funny. You don't even want to talk to me no more. You know, woo do woo, whatever the case is. So she go to, like, talking to me more and more. You know what I'm saying? I'm going along with it. I'm talking to her more and more, too. So... One night, she came to my room. It was lockdown time. She had locked everybody down. Now, this one was so awkward. She wasn't even working night shift. She worked from 6 in the morning to 6 p.m. But this particular day, she was working from 6 p.m. to 6 in the morning. So, you know, wasn't nothing going on. It was all just a normal, regular day. I was talking to her as usual. Now, I felt like old school, you know, I could start to feel that he didn't like how much I was talking to her. You know what I'm saying? But my thing was this. I used to always talk to her and flirt with her before I ever did that. You know what I'm saying? Before I ever paid that money. So I did fall back for a minute. I ain't gonna lie. But when she started back trying to talk to me so much, I ain't gonna just, you feel me? I ain't gonna just not talk to you. So I'm gonna tell you about like a game females play, I feel like a situation she tried to get me caught up in. One night, it's like two in the morning. She came and popped my room though. And she said, hey, Bill. So I'm like, you know, I'm waking up. I'm like, what's up? She talking about, can I come help her clean something up because she wasted some stuff in the booth, but her back hurt. And every time she tried to bend over and get it up, woo -woo -woo, she can't, uh, you know, it hurt and stuff like that. So I grabbed the candy bar, stick it in my pocket because I don't know if this is set up. I don't know what's going on. So I go out there, man. I go out there in the booth. It's a little bitty. She was drinking a uh, like a Fanta pop or something and she wasted a little tiny bit on the counter, not even on the floor. Now I'm inside the control booth, the officer's control booth, like two something in the morning. I ain't got no damn business in here. And that's when she told me, like, man, I really want to, like, I want to mess with you, like, for real. Like, I like you for real. I be texting you and stuff. Now, I was texting her on Instagram. She eventually gave me her number. I was texting on Instagram. So she was telling me, like, like for real, I like you for real. I want to kind of, you know, get to know you and, uh, you know, just see what stuff can go or whatever the case is. So I'm entertaining it for a little bit. I ain't going to lie to you. I'm entertaining a little bit. Then she go to you know, touching on me and stuff. I told her straight up, like, hey, you know, without without, without one of them little things, I'm not even doing this because I just, I care about my safety, about my protection so much, my health. I don't know you like that. I mean, I like you, I rock with you, but I don't know what you do when you leave here. I don't know what none of these dudes got that you be, you know what I'm saying? So if you ain't got, you feel me, if you ain't got that, we just can't do it. So she started laughing. She like, I respect. 
I respect. So she, she, she like, I respect, I respect. The next day she came back to work, she did the exact same thing. Came at like two some in the morning and had me come out there. So I went in there and she pulled it out. Like she pulled it out from right here and sat it on the counter. So I opened it, put it on, we got it in. You know what I'm saying? So she gave me her direct number this time instead of Instagram. So when she got off work, I called her. We chopped it up. Now she went to telling me about old school that he's so controlling. He be lying. He be acting like this. He be trying to be stingy with the money. You know, all kinds of things about him and saying that she don't want to deal with him no more. So she was like, if you want to take over this whole operation, you can. You know, and she was like, and, you know, because I know some people don't be wanting to be around the same people. If you want to, if you want me to get him moved to another dorm, I just go up there and make a complaint. They'll move him to another dorm. And then you can take over this whole operation, you feel me? And we had split it. We had bust everything down the middle. I like you. I want to rock with you. You know what I'm saying? And, bro, as appealing as that sound and as much temptation that was, I told her no. Because I value my life a whole lot. I know it's some people that this prison stuff is all they got. They never getting out. So they will go to any length about this type of stuff. I'm not about to put myself in no situation like that. So now I'm even thinking about, I got to cut her off, period. Like we can't even kick it no more because now I feel like you're trying to turn me against old school, you know, and then you know how it go, man. People talk so bad about a person that be the person they in love with the most. So I ain't, I'm, I'm really thinking of how I'm about to get out of this all together. You know what I'm saying? So I'm telling her like, nah, it's straight, nah, it's straight. Let me think about it. I'm going to figure out a way. This is what I'm telling her. I'm capping her down, though. One time, Unc came up on me. You know, his whole energy different. Everything different about him. He's like, what's up? I'm like, man, what's up? He like, bro, I'm going to just be all the way grown with you. I ain't even going to play no game. What do you got going on with old girl? Because that's my... But I don't know, bro. I be seeing her keep stopping by your room, keep looking at you. Then she acting funny. She acting stupid. She act like she ain't trying to handle that business no more. You know what I'm saying? I'm just trying to see because this how I eat. This how I take care of my family, bro. So, you know what I'm saying? Stuff like that. So, I was like, hey, listen, bro. I understand what you're saying, but that ain't got nothing to do with me. Whatever you feel like she doing, saying to me, you need to talk to her. You know what I'm saying? That's not my issue, bro. You don't see me. Being in her face 24-7, jumping, keep looking at her every time she come around. So that's not my issue. If that's your girl, your lo her loyalty is owed to you, not mine. You know what I'm saying? So he 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 pushed off and stuff, but I can tell he got like some little, little attitude or whatever now. People usually be riding the nuts of whoever got the motion in the prison. That's just how they do. I had a little money. But Unc had way more money than me. Old school was rich. He been in there doing that for a long, long, long time. So I started noticing stuff with the people that I was rocking with. I started noticing little stuff like any little thing they saying, they trying to say something to me. You know what I'm saying? They act like, Ed, oh, I'm doing this so wrong. or Oh, I was wrong about that. I feel like now they're trying to come up with a reason to either try to hit me with the candy bar, get me out of the dorm, or to think that they about to put me on the door, whatever the case it was. I just felt like it was a lot of tension building up between me and other people in the dorm that had nothing to do with it. But I already know everybody riding unk nuts because he got the check. So I just sensed, bro, that there was a lot of funny stuff going on. So I just fell back totally from old girl. I changed my number. I blocked her from my Instagram. And then I told her straight up. I just told her, like, hey, listen, I ain't got but a couple more years to go. And I don't want this situation to put me in a situation where I'm risking my life or I have to flip somebody else and then I'm in here for a longer period of time. It's not even that serious, you know what I'm saying? So I just told her like, I just got to fall back from it. So she, she so-called herself kind of chumped me off. Like, you know, she said something real sleep. Talking about you must be scared of that old, you know what I'm saying? I'm not even studying none of that. Cause I'm not about to try to prove that I'm not. So she started messing with another little young dude. She rocking with this dude for about, man, I probably say a week. I probably say a week went by. 
She rocking with dude. Now, dude's so thirsty and gullible. I guess she bought him some CIs, some cigarettes one day. And that's another nickname they call it, CI. I guess she brought him some cigarettes one day. So he run around the dorm to the people he know smoke. Like, man, I got them CI for sale. I got them CI for sale. So he came up to me. He like, hey, B, I got these CI for sale. I'm like, how many you got? He like, I got 40 CCs for $25. Now, that is a great deal in the prison. The way it go is a little measuring cup. That's 30 cc's. They usually sell that for 50 or you could get it for 25 depending on if you're getting it from the plug or if you're just getting it from a hustler. So for 40 cc's for 25, that was a good deal. So I bought it. In the process of me sending him the money, he was like, yo, if you, if you ever trying to get your rocks off, my boy, he said, just holler at me. You know, old girl, miss such and such. He said, yeah, you know that my girl. I ain't charging, but a band. You know, you can get your own little personal section or whatever. So I'm like, all right, I'll let you know. I already knew I wasn't about to ever do it again. I just said that so we could just kill the subject real quick. But I'm sitting here thinking like, bro, do you really know what's going on? Or you just feel like you don't care? You built like that? You can't just take nobody's way of making money. You know what I'm saying? And, and that's how I know she was trying to start something anyway. Probably about two, three days later, man. Two of the guys I used to run with, the strong way, came to my room. They say, hey, Bill, um, when we go to child, come out here with us. So I'm like, wow, what's up? What's going on? He like, because something about to happen in the dorm, and we don't want none of our guys in here. So I'm like, what about to happen? He like, bro, I'm going to tell you when we go outside, but I'm just letting you know when they call a child, come outside. So I'm thinking really on something like what old girl got going on that you know, they don't want nobody in here. I guess people be coming out, walking out. But I'm like, no, nah, I know it ain't that. Because they know me out of all people. I know how to mind my business and sit back. So for him to say that, it got to be something else. So when they call a child leave out the dorm, I go to child while I'm walking with them. While I'm walking with them, he was like, uh, little bruh. He talking about the little young dude that I bought the cigarettes from. He was like, oh, yeah, little bruh. Yeah, they about to flip that, baby. They about to do it to him. So I'm like, who? So he tell me, uh old school dude paid some dudes because old girl done thought she was leaving Unc and started rocking with dude and he trying to do the same thing Unc just was doing. So you was like, you about to take the way I'm making money or you about to, the way I'm making money finna stop and then another person finna start doing my exact position right in front of my face? Definitely not. Man, we was, we hadn't even made it fully to the chow hall yet before we heard them screaming the cold. All the police go running down there to our dorm. So, you know, we on the big yard. We all turn around looking at the dorm. And the little young boy, bro, they brought him out there wet up, bro. Mm, I'm talking about they brought him out there dorm wet up, bro. That man was leaking from everywhere. Unk didn't do it, of course. But he paid a couple other young dudes to go do it to him. And it's so crazy. I just got chills thinking about that. It's so crazy about that situation specifically because she tried to put me in that position. So I'm sitting back thinking like, damn, what if I would have been so thirsty for the money and I would have told her, yeah, let's run it. Come on, let's do it. Even though I don't feel like it would have happened exactly like that because I had, you know, people that had my back that were going to slide with me. But at the end of the day, you really never know. But it's just like, dude tried to do that and got his whole self wet up. You know what I'm saying? And she tried to put me in that same position. And then after that happened, old girl and old school ended up back together anyway. He was back to running his same business anyway. You know what I'm saying? Old dude, they got wet up. He was in medical for about two months. They talking about he went blind in one eye. You know what I'm saying? He was hit up everywhere, bro. The dudes who did it to him, they ended up getting caught. Somebody in the dawn told him. Somebody snitched on him. They put them on the tip program, nine months to two years. But you know, Unc made sure they were straight. He kept sending them stuff back there, so they was good. And um, old girl eventually got fired. When well, she went to jail, she got caught trying to bring some c cigarettes in. And she eventually went to jail. But it was from her trying to be slick again. It wasn't even through old school. It was through another dude. And, and I guess the way he told her to do it was stupid. And she got caught with it and went to jail. Then when dude finally came out of uh, medical, they just transferred him off, went to another place. So it's like, 
I feel like with the prison, man, everything, no matter what it is, it got a level of risk in your life too. There's a there's a danger in it some type of way. Even something as simple as, oh, I'm just trying to do this real quick, hit this real quick. You see how it's spent around and turned out to be a life-threatening type situation. You see what I'm saying? So that's one place, man, I would never like to be again. I suggest everybody, man, to just do better, make better decisions. I'm saying, can you imagine as a young man, you know, a lot of young, a lot of young dudes be, you know, crazy about the females or whatever. And it's so crazy because I feel like a lot of people come in prison, got something to do with a female. You know, I said, I'd have met so many people that be like, oh, oh yeah, he, oh, this and that with my girl. So I killed the nigga. Oh, this and that old girl. So I shot them in the face. And it's like, bro, y'all better stop risking y'all life about stuff like that, you feel me? Little situations like that that I just told you about in the prison, stuff like that is the reason why somebody's son ain't coming home. Cause they they went to thinking they this and then another dude that already ain't never coming home done paid somebody else to come try to do something to you. That's the reason some people not coming home no more. You know what I'm saying? I promise you, bro, that prison is not fun. I promise you it's not a game. I promise you it's not a joke. I personally would never put myself in another position to go back. And I highly recommend that y'all uh, don't do that either. And just live your life the right way. Get you a job. Get you a trade. Whatever it is you got to do. Make money, not excuses. And, um, yeah, I'm gone. I'm fucked up in the head. If you can't let me just say I came from sleeping on the floor. I'd rather sleep in the bed. I keep my pistol real close. Bitch, I'm cautious, I ain't scared. I'm dealing with paranoia, so all I see is red. I'm fucked up in the head, in the head, in the head. I'm fucked up in the head.